I didn't. I have it with me somewhere. I, I think it's inside. But this is what I do, and I'm weird. I have a log, and I have a log that goes back about five years. Anytime I catch a fish, I write moon phase, water temperature, temperature, and then uh, a date. And I, you know, I have pictures like that too. It's it helps me look back at time and, and then track the uh, trend. I believe that there's there's always cycles. Like with spotted bay bass, me and Jeremy Cole, we talk about cycles. We talk about like different harbors and spotted bay bass fishing getting cycles. But going to your question, what I look for in terms of trend, what water temperature and how you know pre-spawn starts, you'll see two things. You'll see fish cruising. You'll see them actually just swimming. If you go fishing without actually fishing and just walk around, you'll see so much. Just pay attention to the water. It's painting a picture. You just have to see it. If you go out there and you fire your first cast and all you're doing is looking out at your line, you're never seeing what's going on in front of you. I look at water temperature and what I see. So I'll walk around. I do need to get my steps in a little more. I'll walk around and I'll see if I can see fast fish cruising, especially at park lakes. At big lakes, it's it's by water temperature, I should say. So when the water temperature is below like 53, they're more likely gonna be lethargic. It's really cold. I'd say from 53 to 58 degrees, that's when they'll kind of come up and stage up at like main lake points, but they're still 40 feet of water, 50 feet of water. They'll come up a little shallow, they'll feed every now and then, but for the most part, they're still in that like lethargic state. Once that water temperature breaks 58 and a half, going into like 62, that's when you'll see them transitioning and staging up. So they'll go to their main lake points, secondary points, or they'll, they'll, they'll go to uh, our local big lakes. They like drop-offs, like bluff walls and ledges. They sit there, when they get hungry or they want to feed, they'll come up and they'll actually feed, but it's quick for them to go right back down to their staging area where they're chilling. So for park lakes, I look for transitional fish, fish that are roaming. You'll see uh, fish being active, meaning, like he said, uh, you'll see foils. You know, follow the birds too. If you see shad birds, follow those birds. And if you see boils and the shad birds on top, guess what's on the bottom pushing that fish up? So that's what I look for in terms of determining what the, the, the fish are doing and transitioning. Here you go, brother. We'll get some more questions here. Can you explain your logic behind uh, setting the tag and length for, for using a drop shot? Because I hear, like, all right, you gotta set it at eight inches, or like you're fishing from the bank, so it's at an angle, so you have to set it at 14 inches. It all it all varies with the drop shot. If I'm fishing, like say DVL, and I'm marking fish, and I see them under a boat, I'll drop straight on them, and depending on where they're at and associated to the bottom, that's how long I'll have my length. Mm -hmm. But I essentially set my drag, well, my drag, I set my lengths for the leader to the the actual weight, about 14 inches off the jump. I think anything longer than that, one, it just, it's kind of weird when you cast, you know, and two, you start to lose that, that, it's, it's weird. With drop shot, you'll go like this and you'll feel the weight, but if you feel, pay attention really close, you'll actually feel your bait too. And I like to have that feel. 14 inches and under is good. If I'm making parallel casts and the fish are to the bottom, I like a shorter leader. Uh, kind of like the one he tied up was about eight inches because you're going like this and it's at an angle of you bringing it back in so technically if it's eight inches your bait is probably going to be what two three inches off the bottom anyway uh, i don't have any drop drops on the future brother so i'll give you some trailers here you go get jiggy <laughs> what you got all there dallas cowboy i i go to laguna a lot and, and, and recently, it seems like there's a lot more people there. And when I'm talking to them, I'm, I'm barely learning. And as I'm asking the other people that always fish there, they're saying it's kind of a waste of time because there's so many people getting things thrown into the water and the fish to eat all day. So so they're kind of, I don't know if they're just giving up, but as a beginner, do I still, and I go, try to go every day. And, and, and are they spooked that they don't want to, uh, that, that they don't want to go for anything? Welcome to Southern California, right? brother. Right? Yeah. 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 Period. Yeah. Welcome to Southern California. I'll tell you this right now. If you can go to these different park lakes and you can effectively target these bass and be consistent, 
there's a great chance that if you decide to purchase a boat and go fish tournaments, you're going to be successful. Everyone's doing the same thing. I'd say go at four in the morning and use a scented uh, worm, like a power bait kind of thing. It's like a scented power uh, plastic worm. And I, and I think you'll, you'll have a little bit of success, enough to keep you going. Thinking about the opposite spectrum, so when something gets approved, where do they go? The high and cover, so look for the cover. Let people do what they want, but fish on the other end. I think it's digital too. I can try it. If you're gonna fish Laguna, brother, you gotta really slow it down, or you gotta speed it up. I've I've had luck doing a drop shot at Laguna. See, that's my luck. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I pay attention when you're walking, not to go on top of the fish before you get like there, because those fish see so many people. They have really good eyesight. Like if you can make a pass down the bank before you get there to like an area that maybe fishermen haven't gotten to, or like something where you don't think the fish see. But there. but nowadays. They're everywhere. The, the, you know, it's not like two or three years ago. You know, it, it, it's like it's constant now. It's they're, really busy. They're planting. They're pla they're planting trout at these kind of lakes too. So yeah, I think half yeah. of the people are there are just, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. bait and waiting. Yeah. Come up here, oh, brother. This is a it's a biggie pop of crankbait. I like this from when I'm really dredging rock. Laguna has those little rock piles. So if you can kind of find an angle where yeah. you can get on the back side of them, you know, and, and sit here and them. I'm almost guaranteed if you go out there and you just stick with the crankbait this time of the year, you should be able to catch it. Yeah. That's a bluegill imitation. Hey, if you guys look for crankbaits, that biggie pop of one by River to Sea, it's one of my favorite ones. It's something that I can use and abuse and, you know, I don't get hurt when I snag and lose a $25 crankbait. You know? Yeah. Any more questions? What's up, bro? Yeah, I've seen a couple of guys try the bigger baits at uh, Ralph B. and what line do you recommend? Do you go with braid or just regular line? It all depends. Uh, if I'm fishing, if I'm fishing a glide bait, I like to use straight braid. I fish the bigger glide baits. I don't really think that at our local park lakes uh, they care about the braid. I don't think they care about the line. I mean, you see right here. This is this is my setup here. You know, and it's straight braid on a 300. I'm a little different, weird. This is a Trace. Uh, this is 80. Yeah. So this is that the smallest you would go with? Because I know a lot of guys are afraid of chucking it out and losing it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to lose it, you're going to lose it, brother. If you scared, go to church. <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't willing to pay, don't play, brother. Uh, it's uh, as simple as that. If you're nervous about so anything, think about it. It's your first time driving a car. You're nervous. And you're driving a stick shit. Your chances are you going to stall out. But if you just let it happen, but like, oh, here we go, and you be gone. Don't be scared. I mean, it's all material. Yeah. Put an extra extra time of overtime or something, you know? If you're going to get a swim bait fishing, don't be scared. If you're going to lose a bait, you're going to lose a bait. Who was there at that heavy set tournament? Did you guys see what happened to me? Oh, you saw that, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was Wendy, kind of whatever. And I was bomb casting and I just needed to get out a little further. So I adjusted my brakes to try to get out a little bit more to fish in front of these docks or uh, pilings. I cast it off a Hinkle Shad, a $250 bait. I reeled in, I reeled the line in, I was like, well, that sucked. <laughs> that's it. It is what it is. But some people probably go swimming. I'm scared to take my shirt off in public. <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is. <laughs> I got you, bro. That was a good question. Two hundred fifty dollars. This time of the year, uh, if if you guys are interested in getting into the swim bait thing, but you're not too sure about it, I really highly suggest you guys look into some baits like this. This is a Matt Lures Hammer Tail. It's a small profile bait. It's a top hook. It's a great bait to just kind of cruise around or okay. or slow row. And you don't need a like a, a crazy expensive swim bait rod. You can get away with like a, a seven and a half foot jig stick. You just gotta really let them eat it before you set the hook. The the Irod Junior swim bait rod is was pretty much made for baits like that. And the Huddleston 68, some of that smaller swim bait, like the freestyles. Anybody fish the freestyle? All right, I'll give this one to you, Gabe. 
Next question. I'll give this one to this lady if it's a good one. So, pretty much pressure. So it's like people say yes, people say no. I don't look at it like that, bro. No, I, I, I don't. He asked about biometric pressure. I think that's. I think the people that talk about that are people that like to hear themselves talk. <laughs> <laughs> It's fascinating though, isn't it? Somebody it's comes in, he was like, no, well that moon phase and water temperature and all this was a biometric pressure. It's like, dude, off the top of bro. Like, I didn't really get, to get the, the finest education and I don't have time to hear you talk about lines and stuff like that. I would say this, uh, when you guys are fishing, learn how to fish columns properly. That goes hand in hand with that. Do you guys understand what columns is? I, you know, I fish with Paul Bailey, right? And we're throwing uh, swim baits. And we're throwing swim baits similar to this. It was uh, more of a prototype swim bait. I started getting bit with 15 pound floral tied to a leader. And he was running 15 pound straight floral. But I was getting, I was the one getting bit. And he fired the same cast and he wouldn't. And he's like, oh, okay. So, so they want it pulled up. He really helped me open my eyes about column fishing. If you look at some of these pro professionals that say they're throwing like a lipless crankbait, the difference between this guy and the other 60 guys throwing a lipless crankbait was this guy was effectively fishing a column. So I know in our park lakes we don't have like a, there's deeper I guess you can. I used to be that guy. I would go to like Echo and I throw deeper out there and find old like I get get turned on by like one rock that I find on the app. And you just be like, oh, there's, there's going to be a big one. She never came. It was a catfish. But, yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Rain before, during, after? I like it during, brother. Yeah, fish are already wet. <laughs> <laughs> and when it rains, go to Laguna. Chancellor, all those dudes said, don't fish here. Don't go there. You'll see none of those guys there. They'll be at home listening to her old lady's problems. Like, you know, <laughs> oh, really? What's up? What about shallow cruisers or like followers? At what point do you determine you stay there and throw something different where you're like, I can't catch it? Throw a bait that you're throwing. What, what, what bait are you throwing? For shallow cruiser? Yeah. Jerk bait, reaction bait. I'm trying to get some type of reaction. If I can't get a reaction, then I'll go even smaller. And then I'll throw drop shot. If you see fish cruising, how they usually cruise, I would like to say they do figure eights. Because you'll see them go like this, and you'll see them. And then they go out kind of deep, and then they come back in. They're doing figure eights, but they're making way down the bank. They're looking for that equity. If they're looking for a place to set up and stage up, chances are they're not, they're not interested in feeding. You can try to force feed them with a white trouble and grub or, or a big bait. Yeah, that was a that was a reference if you guys got that. But uh, when I see cruisers and they have they don't want anything to do with the baits that I'm, I'm throwing, I usually just leave, or I completely target a different uh, a different part of the water body. If that makes any sense, like if I'm seeing cruisers and they want nothing to do with anything, now I'm fishing deep. I usually fish like 45s out, bringing it in. Maybe I can get them on their figure eight. If they're gonna bite. They're gonna bite coming back in. They're not gonna bite moving along the bait going out. That's just my thought process. It is what it is. I like that one though. Good question, bro. We can try throwing a bigger bait too. Yeah, here I got you covered. We listen. Thank you. All right, good questions. I can't give you any more though, man. You guys cut off. <laughs> <laughs> any more questions? I got them. <clears throat> Uh, we were at Lake Cetus, early morning, real cold. Uh, we got a bunch of li little guys, little ones, little ones are biting on me, that's it. Uh, how do we get those big ones to bite in the little, you know, when all those little ones are biting, or is it, is it water, is it a big presentation? So Lake, Lake Cetus, I just talked to Matt about it. Lake Cetus used to be a place where if you knew how to fish the hut, you probably could catch 10 fish over eight pounds in one day. Matt Newman caught 30 fish in a row, all over 10 pounds fishing this one boater on a hut. Lake Casitas used to be considerably better than Baccarat and Clear Lake. And no one no one would fish it because the regulations to put your boat on there was so tough to get into that people didn't want to commit to it. 
because of the quarantine period. The, the cycle dropped, they stopped planting, stopped planting trout, and I heard they put northern strain in there, and now you're dealing with a bunch of hybrid fish, you catch dinks all day. I look at it like this, even when I'm spotted baby bass fishing, if I'm catching dinks, I, I switch it up. Either I go bigger or I go faster. You know, say you're throwing a underspin, but like full baits, eight pound underspin, you're just catching dink. Well then try to throw something I gave him or try to throw something a little bigger, like bigger, a, uh, yeah. a Zayco or a Kitek on yeah. a chatterbait. Yeah. You know, give the bigger ones a, a, a opportunity to get a meal. Yeah, that's what we're this talking. is a time of year that if you're gonna sway their judgment, it's gonna be with a bigger presentation. It's gotta be split second though. You know, that's why I fish fast. Because if they're following your bait and they never commit to it, yeah. leave the fish alone, she's yeah. not ready to eat. And I, it took me years to learn that. I used to throw big baits and I'd see fallers. I'm like, oh, there's another one right there. They could have been doing that all oh, day. Oh, there you know? she goes again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just like my high school crush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, just leave them alone. Come back. I fish lefty. You guys notice that? I fish lefty. I'll tell you guys uh, uh, why I started fishing lefty. I used to fish righty. I was at Lake Mission Viejo, and if you guys don't know about that place, that place pretty much had a couple of world record fishing donkeys. And during the pre-spawn, me and my cousin would go there essentially every day. And there's this one day that I went to this long dock. It was probably for me to where the man in blue shirt, sub blue shirt. For me, to, that dude over there, the dock came out. So I fired this mat, which is a like a 10 inch basement magnet. It looks like a bigger version of the HUD. Let it sink to the bottom and I fished the middle column. And it's kind of like what the, the time of day is. I think it was like 11. So under the dock was shade. It was pretty dark because it was deep. I saw this darker shade moving towards my swim bait. She came out, big old bug eyes. It was one of the biggest fish I've ever seen with my own eyes come up to one of my baits. And she turned away. So I left her alone. I went and fished, came back at about one o'clock. This time I put the boat a little closer to it. I knew where she lived, I knew where she was at. She didn't follow it, she came from under the, you know, the dark zone, and then she came and looked at it and went back. So I have righty, right? Right here on the boat. And I go and I swing and I skip. My bait hits the water, boom. On the second one, she instantly reacts. She was already sitting there looking up. She ate it on the second splash. So while I'm doing this right here, trying to turn the handle to set the hook, the mat came out of her mouth and swung by my face. I lost the biggest fish of my life. So the next morning, four o'clock, we're there in line to get our rentals. I'm determined to get this fish. Like this is it, it's gonna happen. I don't know how big she is. I just know she's big. There's a guy fishing the point the day before, and he was in line that day. He gets the boat first. He goes straight over there, and he's got a like a 12-inch black power bait curly tail worm on 30-pound mono on this like big five setup. I'm like, please don't go over there while we're trolling all the way up to the spot. He goes over there, and he makes one cast, you know, like long worm cast. All of a sudden, he's just like super bill dance jumps up he's like oh god oh god now i go and like i at least want to see the fish i hop on the dock i pull the line it's wrapped on a piling i see her i grab her i pull her up she was 15 9. that made me sick to my stomach <laughs> <laughs> so i gave the dude the fish and let him take his picture and stuff and just please don't kill the fish he let her go and i went home and an EBA account and I sold every right handed reel I own. And I bought lefty. I think the best thing that you can do getting into bass fishing is go lefty. That's my personal opinion. Some of the some of the coolest guys I, not cool, some of the best guys I know in terms of fishing, they all fish lefty. No transition. You know, I'm right here, I'm fishing the real in. So how I learned how to do it is I went to the lake tied on a, a one gallon thing to put it up with dirt, one gallon water thing to put it up with dirt and sand or whatever, put it down this hill, and I just grind it up. After like doing it for an hour, I had it. Then I needed the hook set, 
So then I snapped two rods messing with this five gallon jug before I realized this is not gonna work out right. But it's the best thing I ever did. You know, I made that adjustment, it upped my game just a little bit more. It, uh, it allowed me to learn something new, which humbled me at the time. And I still haven't had my opportunity to catch a 59, but I know if it ever happens, I'll be good. So, any other questions? What about you? Have, uh, I'll what, go with you and the you over there. What about colors? Does color make much of a difference, or you use more for reaction? Reaction to bait. I think colors matter to little fish, dude. To be honest, uh, I think what bigger, bigger fish, you're gonna catch a big bass in two ways: you either drop it in their head, you know, or the stars align, dude. You know, it, it's every, every, it's I'm serious. You, it's you go out there, out of everywhere you can stop the fish. You stop right there, and out of everywhere you could have cast, you cast right there. Out of every bait you could have chose, you chose that one bait. And it just so happened that you're retrieving it right in front of her, and she was ready to eat. That's, I think it's all luck, dude. Especially with a big fish, it's all luck. You know, you need skill to get there, but it's it's all luck. We could, I could sit here and say, like, these guys know some of the places I fish where I've caught some big ones. And a lot of people are catching big ones there. But nine out of 10 times you go, one of us is always sticking a good one. And that's not because of luck, it's because we know you know, what to look for. Rock, grass, transition, we look for the ledge, we look for this, we put a pattern together. But when it comes to the big, big one, oh, that's all luck. I don't think color matters at all, especially if you're fishing at night, brother. I'd say fish darker colors at night, just because it creates a bigger shadow. But for the most part, I'm not really a, a color guy. I'm not raising for me. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, brother. Yeah, pretty grand. What you got all there, boss? How do you fit that first sleeper, Jake? Fish the same way for uh, freshwater and spotted bait bass, or different? Jake, you remember when the name came out? So this bait got released at ICAST, right? This is the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. We saw it and the first thing we thought was spotties. But they're advertising it for smallmouth bass. But like smallmouth bass and spotties are kind of the same thing. They're very aggressive. They don't really stack up, stack up. They're, they associate to cover uh, similar. You know, you're never gonna catch a, 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 a smallmouth bass just like in open water doing nothing. It's always something there, whether it be a boulder or a stone or like old piling. They're very cover oriented, just like spotties. What I like to do with the dark sleeper is I more or less use it as a search bait. It allows me to see if there's going to be fish there because a lot of fish, I mean spotted bay bass, they love it. But how I fish it is very simple. Gobi. That's it. That's how I like it. Or a slow row if I'm trying to cover water. But it emulates a gobi. And anybody who knows what a gobi is, gobi's they don't really just swim. They go like this. They dart up and down. That's it. They kind of, it's like trawl dads. That's what gobies do. And that's what this bait is, goby. I'll swim it every now and then and pause just because of the action. It still emulates a bait fish. I get bit. But I find that the bigger ones that eat this are, are, are on the like pop, pop, pause. The pop, pop, pause. That type. Like fishing like a jig. You know. I don't have any sweepers up here, brother, but you can more welcome to come check out some cool stuff and grab one. What's your uh, favorite uh, line to line knot? Uh, RP. RP? RP, I think, is the thinnest, easiest knot to tie. Do you have one for a mono to fluorocarbon? The uni to uni? But I never do mono to fluoro. Uh, I just, I don't like that connection knot in general. I don't think, the, the whole reason why we use floral is for two, three reasons. One, the line sinks, so your bait to get down and stay down longer. So if you're fishing a crankbait and you want your bait to stay down longer in that strike zone, fish floral. And it's abrasion resistant too, so fish floral. Then the fish can't see it because of its visibility. So that's why we like floral. But if you're at park lakes and you're fishing a crankbait, I like to use mono, it's shallow. You don't want your bait down there the whole time. You want to be able to take something and have it come up without you just dredging the whole time. If you dredge in these park lakes with a crankbait, 
You're just gonna pick up algae and grass and, and muck. Not to say you won't get bit, but just fish mono, I think. The, as far as connection knots, he asked, I like the RP knot. Uh, we did a leg lake meetup. We have to do a connection knot. I'll pull that the lines out and I'll challenge anybody here. You tie your knot, I'll tie my knot. I guarantee you mine's, and that's just the confidence speaking, you know? I, I'm so confident in that knot, it's fast. And once you get it down with hand movements, it's it's a good strong knot. Come over here and get a bait. That was for braid to mono you're talking about? The RP? I like that's my braid to mono or braid to floral connection on yeah, over, RP. F, over FG. Any more questions before we move on to harbor bass fishing? All right, we're gonna get into harbor bass fishing. Uh, who here is fish, fish and spotted bay bass? Cool. I'm gonna give away some raffle tickets here in a bit. Uh, one, one, two people is actually gonna act, uh, be able to fish with me. All expenses were paid for a trip on this boat here. You don't have to bring anything but a positive attitude. That's all I ask. I'll have beer on the boat if you guys are into that. Other than that, you can check out some of the rods that I've talked about, some of the reels. But yeah, a one person is going to win and get to take a friend. We'll coordinate a date to get that going. I got into spotted bay bass fishing a while ago. I didn't really get heavily into it because I graduated to Yellowtail fairly quick. I like fishing calicos at the island. But uh, once I bought this boat, probably like four and a half years ago or so, I bought it with the intention of fishing tournaments. And after donating quite a bit, I realized that I wasn't competitive. I wasn't competitive because I didn't I didn't have that financial stability to go and free fish. So everything I've done thus far has been to set me up to go and do it again. But this time I'm gonna be able to free fish. This time I'll take everything I've ever learned and I'm gonna go out there and, and actually win tournaments. I've done little club ones and won those, but I feel like those don't count. I've gotten a lot of top tens, I've gotten a lot of top fives, which I think is cool when there's 60 boats out there. And I'm just this young dude from Compton with this, the smallest boat out there. I thought it was pretty cool, but I'm trying to go for number one, you know? So I'm setting everything up for that. Uh, part of that setup process, I have to dump the boat in salt water to promote the coastal rods. As you can see, my, my trailer, I told you guys, didn't like it. It's falling apart on me. I've already had to replace the drums. But that's the mindset. That's that's what it's going to take for me to get to my goals. And it's going to happen. I found refuge with spotted bay bass fishing. Because I couldn't go drive to DBL in Paris every weekend. It was tough. You know, it's a two and a half hour drive. Two, and then you get to fish all day for, for three, four fish if you're lucky. And then come back home. And all ladies yelling at me. My kids are daddy and I'm like oh you know and I'm tired I'm just I love my kids and all they nagging at me not so much <laughs> Come on, I could be doing anything else like drinking she said you did drink on your boat I was like but it was on the boat it's not in a bar 